This is a, just a quick talk through of the areas of the rubric that you are going to focus on this week. Um, as you work on your uh, next section uh, of your IWA, last week we drafted the introduction, 300 to 350 words of the introduction. And this week you're going to add 400 to 450 words of the body of the uh, written argument. So we focused, I asked you to focus mainly on rows one and two in the introduction because those are about context. Um, and this week when you draft your uh, some of your first body paragraphs, I'm going to ask you to focus on rows three and four. That's about uh, understanding and analyzing perspective in row three and establishing argument in row four. Definitely, you're going to also be trying to use and select evidence that is relevant and credible, which is row five. Um, but we are also going to go back and edit for that and then refocus on that in the second uh or the, really the third deadline of your uh, IWA draft. So let me talk a bit about rows three and four, and then I will show you some examples from recent high scoring responses, uh, which are, are in my Google Drive at the bottom of the classwork section under materials. Uh, so you can read all of this, but I'm just gonna hit some high points. Um, so for row three, uh, understanding and analyzing perspective, it's looking for the response to evaluate multiple perspectives and synthesize them. So you do have multiple perspectives or stakeholders uh, that you need to represent, but you definitely need to weave them together. Um, I'll talk about that more when I show you examples, uh, but you need to say something about what they have to do with each other uh, and draw those relevant connections between them. Uh, and this is the part of the rubric where you bring up objections. Uh, for instance, maybe if you're talking about stakeholders, what would one stakeholder have to say about this other stakeholder's perspective? Um, also, you're addressing implications and limitations to those arguments. Then in row four, um, it's asking that throughout the whole paper, but we're going to start that in the first few body paragraphs, that you, est that you establish a clear and convincing argument. And that part of that is your organization uh, that you present can, and connect claims and evidence. Uh, so to walk through these these first two examples, the first one from 2019, um, they uh, for this high scoring response um, liked the fact that the perspectives were very clear. Uh, the perspectives for this one included. I would say more like stakeholders, Chinese farmers, government, biotechnology, and then data science. Um, and they liked specifically commented that they created a thought, this person, this student created a thoughtful dialogue among those perspectives or stakeholders. So that's to me the most important thing you can do with the perspectives or stakeholders is to create a dialogue. So think about our dinner party dialogue activity earlier in the year. Um, think about what each perspective would say about the others or what each stakeholder would say about the others. Um, as uh, really just what they have to do with each other as part of this, let me scroll down here. Um, I, th I think that this paragraph on page 10 of this, um, IWA helps me to see that. They say the student says when applied to the Chinese agriculture industry, data science can transform the production method um, from pollute first, then clean up to approach a, uh, to a from that approach to a more sustainable approach. Um, so that's kind of we can see in this paragraph how they're bringing in uh, farming, specifically the actual farmers who are doing the farming. Um, with data science and really weaving them in together and the government. Uh, so you need to sort of do some weaving there with perspectives. Uh, as far as establishing argument for this uh, paper, they this paper lacks signposts, but they so in other words, 
there are there are not section titles to each of these uh, sections, but the scorers felt that there was a logical line of reasoning. Uh, for instance, they they liked the fact that near the beginning, to scroll back up, um, the paper addressed technology before addressing data science um, because that was a logical way to lead into it. Uh, one other thing I want to point out about this paper that is not about rows three and four of the rubric, but I thought was interesting, is that instead of actually putting the research question in the paper, they just ended the introductory paragraph by saying that the paper would examine which method of the Chinese government the Chinese government should apply in order to facilitate sustainable agriculture. However, we can basically infer from that statement that their research question was something like, which farming method should the Chinese government apply to facilitate sustainable agriculture? So you, if you don't put your research question in the introduction, which I think you should just stick it in there, uh, like the second paper does, I'll show you that in a second, you at least need to represent the question. Okay, so second sample. Let me scroll to the top. I'll show you how they incorporated the actual research question. This is a paper on reality in virtual reality. That's what's the title. Uh, their research question was very clearly written out here. Uh, they say that the potential for incorrect communication of information as well as the psychological harms VR may have raise the question colon, and then they write their research question out. So that's a that's another way to do it. That's how I would recommend it, but. Um, but that's your choice. So to talk about rows three and four for this paper, um, the perspectives of this that, that were represented in this paper, which also doesn't have um, subheadings, although I, I would recommend having subheadings, are producers, uh, the business entities, uh, the ethics, sort of a VR journalism, the psychological perspectives. They walk through several perspectives here. Um, for this one, I wanted to talk mostly about the establishing argument section, uh, row four of the rubric, uh, because they, uh, the scorers liked that this sample acknowledged possible problems using experts and one thing that really stuck out to me from the commentary uh, that was provided at the bottom in the scoring is this quote. It said, the evidence in this paper supports the argument, but the commentary propels the argument. So they said that, I'll read that again, their evidence supports the argument, but the commentary propels the argument. Um, I think an example of this is on page seven. So the text evidence is well selected and should be selected in order to really bring out using credible, relevant sources what the paper is trying to claim about virtual reality. However, that is not all you need in order to establish a really clear argument. So what that means is your commentary or what you are saying um, really creates the argument so that the evidence is there, but your commentary really makes it. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find the place. on page seven. Okay. So they really liked um, a few particular, let's see. Okay, here we go. They liked a few particular places where um, some maybe signal tags of commentary stuck out to them, the scorers. Um, for instance, here in this section, the student is talking about the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, with regards to virtual reality. Uh, and they are saying that 
VR could fall under technological innovations category, therefore subject to FCC regulations. Uh, however, the FCC regulates specific, specifically communication through technology, not technology as a whole. Um, and then this sentence really stuck out to them. Therefore, the FCC may not be able to regulate all VR content, but it is able to regulate VR media when used for journalistic purposes, as journalism's main goal is to com communicate information to the public, thus falling under the FCC's jurisdiction. That's a conclusion of the author, and it ties in um, the journalistic aspect of VR from the beginning of the paper with the role of the government in which is the FCC. The FCC would be like the area of the government that was controlling virtual reality or could control it. So that's really their argument, right? That sentence is a, is a sentence that's an original thought of the author that draws on several pieces of evidence that they have incorporated in their paper. Um, I also happen to think that that sentence weaves in multiple perspectives, but they thought that it also really propelled the argument forward. And there are several little almost sentence stems that they give you at the bottom of this commentary. I'll go down here and show you that um, under row four um, that could be used if they are relevant to other with other papers like yours. Um, they like these transitions, like, such as however viewers argue. On the other hand, a possible solution. They like them to be specific as possible, but they thought that that showed a, a sophisticated organizational style within the paragraphs that you're transitioning from one thought to another, that you're, you're helping explain the text evidence to the reader uh, and not just giving it. And uh, assuming that the reader, don't assume the reader can, can draw their own conclusions. You are there to draw the conclusions uh, and to actually establish the argument. So uh, I hope that that is helpful when, as you are drafting your, uh, your next four to 450 words uh, of your argument and really getting into the perspectives and how you're setting up uh, what you are ultimately going to be arguing in your paper. Uh, happy writing, and we'll give each other some feedback uh, early next week.